We know that science, uh, by definition, is the measure of, I guess, our reality in the most objective way possible, using the scientific method of having a hypothesis and then doing an experiment to test the hypothesis and see if the hypothesis is proven true or false. Now, you can never prove a hypothesis. You can only suggest that it leans one way or the other. Science doesn't aim to necessarily prove things. Science is more about statistics, math, and trying to infer, strongly infer things, you know. There's limitations on what science can do. Like there's certain facts, there's given facts, like we know gravity exists because we can see things fall and stuff like that. Do you know why it exists? That's another thing, right? Like science is good at explaining the what of reality, like what things are. But, when but not the why it, is. Exactly. Yeah. Science has been proven, like, sometimes they've been wrong multiple times, you know, when we yeah. believed, like, the wrong misconceptions and stuff because they could have been off by the smallest minor things. Yeah. But yet it's still the common average belief that if science says it is, then it is, you know, because I'm a man that likes to believe in science. You know, I like to see the evidence. I like to see the data and all that. I always am questionable on the data. And it is known that humans make mistakes. We make human errors all the time. So how, for me, it's hard to believe it 100%. Yeah, like, I think people sometimes take it into an ideology, like science is almost like a religion to, to some degree. But I think, you know, science has you know, sometimes has helped, you know, uh, maybe even understand some parts of religion. And so I think they co coexist together. There is still, you know, a lot of things that science cannot measure and cannot uh, therefore prove to be to be truth. And, and, and since it's all based off of numbers and, and things that you can measure, then what happens you know, about the the other realms, you know, things outside of times. You can't measure completely everything. And yeah, because so you look at the basis of science, mathematics is the very strong basis for science. It's almost what science depends on. Maybe not in every single case, but like statistics, uh, equations, in physics. Ratios and yeah, all that, yeah. All of that. So like when you take math and you look at math, what is math? Math, you could, some could say math was something that human beings created and we found a way to make it work. I don't know how. But we created it and it works. Somehow there's a pattern and it works. Or other people say we just discovered math and nature, you know. And depending yeah. on where you fall and on that, like if math is an illusion, then science is somehow is somehow still works, but it's kind of not perfect. One of my professors who is a philosopher, he was telling me that before, you know, they considered um, philosophy as a soft science. Yeah, that's where science came from. It was from philosophy. And so what what is, you know, consciousness? What is, you know, reality in itself? You know, it's... The big questions that philosophers have asked for, for right. several science, science still have, we still haven't figured out what consciousness is, and science, neuroscientists have studied it, but they still haven't found the exact thing that causes consciousness. And that, like we were talking about emotions, how do you measure emotions? How do you measure happiness? You can measure things on a scale with science, like weights on a scale or how much a chemical is in a glass, but consciousness, I don't know. Science bases a lot off of math, you know? But if math was man-made, per se, because we don't really know if it was man-made or stumbled upon, but if it was man-made, it goes back to human error. How do we know somewhere along the line they didn't make an error and we're still basing off of most of our beliefs off of their human error over time, you know? That would mean most stuff we believe in is a lie, you know? And like you were saying, you can't do, you can't measure emotions and, like, uh, just stuff that we deal with daily, like, you can't measure, how do we know how to speak? You know, you can't measure our vocabulary yeah. by numbers and stuff yeah, or the yeah. sounds we make. Quantitative research uses math and numbers and measurements. Qualitative is like what you're saying, people's words, what people say. So they conduct interviews on participants in, in these experiments of about like 10 people, sometimes more. And then they do coding, which is a research technique in qualitative research. And they try to find common themes in what these people are saying. And then they break those themes down into a research paper to try to figure out what it means. And that's more philosophical, I would argue, because it's not purely hard science, like Jose was talking about. It's not hard science, it's soft science. And the problem with yeah. soft science is like, what you're saying, how do you measure happiness? Well, we have, like, how do you measure depression? Happiness is hard. Let's take something like depression, clinical depression. We have inventories, that, the Beck depression inventory that can measure depression. But even going off that, like what I was doing with my professor today, 
like we were trying to figure out how to do this inventory and, and sometimes the data doesn't work perfectly. And so that's the thing about these inventories while they are, they're man-made, so they're not perfect. So how, how are they able to measure, like there's a connection between them. How do we know that no, it's just that's, not- That's like, a good question. Complete. If you're saying measuring as in like, how do we measure the comorbidity of depression and anxiety disorders, then that would be, the answer to that would be they get a group of participants in a population and then they run statistical analysis. But wouldn't there be too many variables, though? Because That's why even in the psychological sciences, experimental designs are so important. And that's why they're hypercritical of these peer review journals. They look for con- what you're talking about, confounding variables, which are variables that could, uh, hint- could influence or bias yeah. the results. And so you want to get rid of those. That science can only get so far to the truth because mm-hmm. you can't, there's no way to perfectly measure happiness. Jose was talking about consciousness. We can't measure our subjective consciousness you know? because even generalizing is not perfect. And you can't claim that this treatment, because it was proven in this experiment or shown, can apply to the whole world. Like that's not feasible. <laughs> I see yes. science as like this thing to where it goes here to here, but everything else outside this, it doesn't even try to answer, you know, like, like consciousness, happiness, emotions, why yeah. the why behind everything like why does gravity exist why does the universe exist why does life exist where did life come from and why did life start from nothing you know there, there's so many gaps out there you know especially in the soft sciences but i think even even in itself in the in the hard sciences you know there's a lot of things you know that are still out there and a lot of things that we just still don't know what, what we might consider you know woo woo or whatever you know, might be the unlock to to our problems today. Like we talked before in, in our previous podcast, we have a lot of people who are very smart in different generations. And so they they might have uh we, we can learn from from those yeah. things.